I'm sure none of you need to be told what Blizzard is. Even if you don't play Warcraft, Diablo, Overwatch and etc. yourself, anyone who's interested in video games has heard something about the legendary Californian game development company at least once. Those who are 30 or older as myself probably also know that Blizzard was originally called Silicon and Synapse. And that in addition to all the modern ongoing franchises, the developers from the city of Irvine have developed three more games that old school gamers not only love very much till this day, but also would very much like to see at least one more sequel to each one of them. Those games are Blackthorn from 1994, Rock and Roll Racing from 1993, and the most important in terms of today's video, The Lost Vikings from 1992. A lot of us kids played the adventures of the Scandinavian medieval guys back in the 90s. Fortunately, this game was released for both MS-DOS PCs and Sega Genesis, the most popular gaming platforms here in Russia, as you can recall from the previous episodes. For me personally, The Lost Vikings is one of the most beloved PC games from the 90s. And yes, I know that unlike Blackthorn and Rock and Roll Racing, there actually was a sequel for The Lost Vikings. But the thing is, despite I even owned it both for the PC and the first PlayStation back in the day, I never really was into it. I tried North by Northwest again after completing the first Lost Vikings once more on a livestream several months ago. But still, despite the sequel has a lot of great innovations, new Viking skills and even new playable characters, either because of the upgraded visuals or due to the lack of nostalgia for this game, I like the first one much more. And it would seem, when if not in the era of the remakes and reimagining the classic games, we should wait for another sequel or at least a remake of one of these Blizzard's classic retro games. Preferably Vikings, right? But sequel my ass. All we've got was the Blizzard arcade collection that allowed us to play Blackthorn, Rock and Roll Racing and the first Vikings on a modern PC or console with the widescreen, instant save states and all the other really necessary stuff any emulator can already do. But okay, at least it was legal. And let's be fair, a huge amount of gamers wanted to get the real successor of the cult Blizzard's classics. And not this. Unfortunately, the last official entry of the Vikings series remained in 1997. But as you could already guess, not in Russia. Hello YouTube, my name is Victor and you are watching the Russian Video Game Comrade Show. There is a rule on the internet that is called Rule 34. It states that if something exists in real life or is made up, there will be a pornographic depiction of it. Here in Russia we altered it as if there was a really popular video game in the 90s, there will be a shitty Russian rip-off of it. And The Lost Vikings is no exception. In 2006, Russian Drug Enforcement Administration, within the framework of the implementation of the activities of the federal target program Comprehensive Measures to Combat Drug Abuse and Illegal Trafficking, I had a problem pronouncing this even in Russian, and you have no idea what a nightmare it was just to translate it to English. Speaking English, Russian Drug Fighting Authority decided to prevent kids using drugs in the most popular way among them – using video games. And as the Russian DEA obviously didn't have a game development unit within their structure, they've outsourced this task to a professional game development company. Well, as my friend Stika says, kind of. Credit states that the game named Anti-Drug Addiction, the first video game that helps to fight the illegal drug usage, was developed by the Multimedia Technologies and Distant Learning Company. I even found their archived website from the 2007. And yes, they've made a lot of software for the government back in the day. But the thing is, they never made a single video game. And I really doubt that the experience of making software for the agricultural census of 2006 could help them to rush into the video games market. I really have to state one thing here. Selling the game wasn't a priority, as it was intended to be distributed freely. For example, the Russian YouTuber Annushka Maker tells that her sister got the game as a prize in school sports competition, 
And also, there are a lot of guys in my Russian version of this video in the comments section who tell that they played it in the 2000s during their computer science lessons. But to be honest, I really would like to see a kid who went to a video game store in 2006 and decided to buy Anti-Drug Addiction over Fear Extraction or Tomb Raider Legend, if it was sold there. If you're wondering now what Blizzard had to do with all of this, well, nothing. At least nothing they are aware of. Because I really doubt they know that with the release of the Anti-Drug Addiction, their Lost Vikings series basically obtained the third installment from another universe. And despite not so bad at first glance visuals, this game is a great example of the fact that it's not enough just to steal a great proven idea, simply yet brilliant mechanics and even well-made gameplay to make a decent game. Any game requires talented game and level designers, a sane story and at least a drop of love and not just a desire to hit a jackpot on a government order. But before we continue to the game itself, let's get back for a while and find out how the guys who only used to make the software for the agricultural census and stuff like that before even managed to make a real video game. Obviously, they've just stole another game. Well, technically, they didn't steal it, more like copied, as the anti-drug addiction was made by the same guys who made another Russian Lost Vikings 3 several months before. Here in Russia we have a cult animated series called Bans Investigations, later renamed to Pilot Brothers. This is basically a satiric version of the Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes, made both for grown-ups and kids. This cartoon has several episodes made from 1986 to 1996, a comic book follow-up and a total of 8 video games. Cartoons and comics are just amazing, and some of the games are really good too. For example, the first two point-and-click adventures that, by the way, are available on Steam in English. But these games were made by other guys. And the three next games, Pilot Brothers The Dark Side of the Moon, Pilot Brothers Olympics and Pilot Brothers The Mystery of the Atlantic Herring, were already made by the guys we are talking about today – Pipe Studio. Pipe Studio is a Russian game development company founded in 2002. Their first game, Full Pipe, released in 2003, was a really outstanding point-and-click adventure that not only had a western release that was really rare for the Russian games of the early 2000s, but a western release made real by no more no less John Romero and Tom Hall. Yes, those John Romero and Tom Hall. Mr. Romero and Mr. Hall visited the Russian Video Games Developers Conference in Moscow in 2004 and saw Full Pipe there. Rumor has it that the game created such a favorable impression upon them that John and Tom didn't want to stop playing until there was a huge line of the guys who wanted to test it too, and Mr. Romero and Mr. Hall were kindly asked to leave the stand immediately. Another interesting fact here, the full pipe was designed by the Russian cartoonist Ivan Maximov, the guy who made the dandy elephant design. What are the odds, right? By the way, did you know that Viktor Savyuk, the father of the dandy, once said that there is a possibility that Dandy Elephant was partly copied from the neon sign of the Casarossa Club in the red light district of Amsterdam. Just several facts I felt I need to share with you. So, after the full pipe, Pipe Studio released the third point-and-click Pilot Brothers adventure, Olympic Pilot Brothers minigames collection, and the game because of which I generally remembered Pipe Studio today. Pilot Brothers – The Mystery of the Atlantic Heron Long story short, this is the Lost Vikings, but in the setting of the Pilot Brothers. The main characters of the cartoon have different skills and have to work together to complete a set of levels to solve the detective case. The game has a decent plot, nice graphics, a little questionable gameplay, but still it has at least a little sense considering it's just a clone of an award-winning classics. And this is the place multimedia technology and distant learning jumps in. They have a government contract for the anti-drug addiction game and no clue of how the games are made. So they just redirect the development to the Pipe Studio. I assume unofficially, as there is no info on this in the game's credits. This assumption is based on two things. The fact that Mystery of the Atlantic Herring and Anti-Drug Addiction is basically the same game, 
and the insight from one of my viewers who states he worked for the Ukrainian branch of the Pipe Studio back in the day. Let's finally take a look at the anti-drug addiction. The game starts with a CG movie. Or at least I thought it would before I realized it's just a set of static CG pictures. In a secret drug cartel lab, a mad scientist has synthesized a new drug that promises drug dealers a lot of money, but causes super fast addiction in drug users, destroys the brain and leads to inevitable death. The greedy evil boss is already counting the profits from the sale of a large batch of a new drug. Caravans of drug couriers are already carrying deadly cargo through the abandoned tunnels. <laughs> Fortunately, the famous detective team is on the alert. The first alarm signal has already been received, which means that the game of chess will have to be interrupted. It's really written there, the game of chess. Citizens on control, led by senior comrades, are in a hurry to destroy the insidious plans of the merchants of death. That's it. Time to start. Anyone who played The Lost Vikings will be totally familiar with the things going on the screen. If I recall it right, they didn't even change the control scheme from the MS-DOS version of The Lost Vikings from 1992. But they've obviously changed the playable characters. We have an DA officer here, the Martial Arts Master. To see this with your own eyes, you just have to press space. He also fires a gun if you press Alt. A schoolgirl who is a great jumper, and a schoolboy who can use his skateboard as a shield. To alter its direction, you should also press space. You know, I really don't even want to ask why he's carrying his skateboard like this. It's pretty clear. Zoomers try to make everything exceptional and don't even think of making anything the old way. How you doing, fellow? Wanna take a ride? You get to learn how to handle the board first, man. But can anyone tell me why the DEA officer is chasing the drug dealers accompanied by the kids? Just think about it. This is an official DEA video game and it featuring kids fighting the drug mafia. What the f- Remember the first Lost Vikings? It had no lack of logic. Three Vikings got lost in space and time and just tried to get back home. And this transformed to some kind of Spy Kids vs drug dealers. Just fascinating. Or maybe I've got it wrong and these are not just kids. Maybe these are the spoiled kids who think of starting using drugs and the DA officer just took them along to show them that Drugs are bad, you shouldn't do drugs, okay? Ah, one more thing I forgot to mention. If the school kid will raise his skateboard above his head, it will immediately transform into a parachute. Believe it or not. Stop, man! Don't do it! Don't do it, please! No, you don't understand! I have a parachute! What parachute? Well, if he'll use it right. Otherwise, the kid can suffer immediate tragic death. Due to the consumed drugs, I assume. And now, knowing all of this, you have to finally pursue your goal, and it's also the same as in The Lost Vikings. To defeat the drug dealer's evil boss. Uh, I wanted to say to bring all the three drug fighters to the end of each level. Preferably without the tragic death. When you reach the exit of each level, there will be a chained bomb there. This is apparently just the drug addict who, as soon as your team approaches, will find his inner strength to break his chains from the addiction. Please don't ask me how this works. I have no idea. And by the way, don't you think this guy really looks like the drug dealers from the opening picture? And if it's really so, why is he chained? Didn't sell the drugs he was supposed to and just use them himself? Now, children, has that marijuana made it around yet? Uh, the... Who has the marijuana now? The anti-drug addiction has 12 levels in it. Most of them are just reskinned levels from the Pilot Brothers game from the beginning to the end. They contain the subway station, caves swarming with the giant spiders and acid pools, post-apocalyptic overgrown tunnels and the secret underground lab. 
When you finish a set of locations, it just blows with out of nowhere massive explosion. And no, no one will tell us why. There are no cutscenes or even an ending movie in the game. Just use your imagination, kids. Each of these 12 levels can be completed in 10 to 15 minutes max. And the only thing that somehow stretches the gameplay is the terrible despondency, monotony and, of course, bugs. For example, you can lower the bridge over the electricity and still be killed by it. Brilliant programming. Just brilliant. I also have to say that even if there were no bugs, completing the levels would also be a challenge, as they are so dull, I couldn't stand more than four of them at a time. Do you remember how you had to find a different way through the level for every viking? Decent puzzles, searching for the keys and other needed stuff, transferring them between the characters to open doors… Forget about it. Technically, there are keys and puzzles in the anti-drug addiction. But all of the things you have to do here are so straight, a three-year-old kid can solve it. You can tell me, Victor, but this is a game for kids. Yes, but not for the babies, right? Have a little respect for the kids' developers. You know, they aren't dumb. Some of them can be even smarter than we, the grown-ups, are. All you get here is a single lonesome way for all three characters, some places where you have to fly on a skateboard to get a key, and a lot of healing fruits and checkpoints all over the level, making the completion of it a piece of cake. It seems they didn't even try to make it at least a little interesting. In the end of the game, there is no boss fight or anything else. You just complete the last level, your characters enter another door, and everything starts to explode. And that's it. Credits. The only bright side I see in this game is the fact that, in my opinion, it fully fulfills its purpose. There are a lot of kids now who want to devote their lives to making video games. And any of them who will play the anti-drug addiction even once will realize that even if they had a crazy idea of starting using drugs, they'll reconsider it in no time. Otherwise, instead of making really great video games like The Lost Vikings, they'll end up making such shit as the anti-drug addiction is. As for the Pipe Studio, they never made another decent game I know about. They are still in business now, but all they release now are either simple PC games for kids under the Russian cartoons license, or simple games for the mobile phones. I don't really know if they are commercially successful, but I can tell for sure that they never made a game as good as their first one, The Full Pipe, that even managed to amuse such outstanding game developers as John Romero and Tom Hall back in 2004. I hope things can change someday. For everyone who is interested in the anti-drug addiction game, as it's freeware, or should I even say abandonware now, I have attached a link to my Google Drive with its ISO in the description. Feel free to explore it yourself. Unfortunately, it's Russian only, but I think you can manage to run it quite easily, and to play it you also don't need to know the language. So I think it'll be ok. It runs on modern Windows 10 systems no strings attached, so just have fun. On the other hand, Pilot Brothers is a copyrighted game, so I'm sorry, but I can't distribute it. There will be a link for a long play on YouTube in the description instead for those who want to check it out too. And I think that's it for today. I really hope you liked today's episode and willing to see more. Please press thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Have a nice day, good luck!